A can jam back in 2022, all the talk was about XMEM's driver technology and how this revolution was going to completely change the audio tech industry. These drivers have no magnets and no moving coils. Sound is produced directly by bending a silicone membrane as it receives a voltage. And this improved stiffness and rigidity means that you're moving air faster, giving you a better transient response. And there are a bunch of other big benefits to this technology too. Since they're effectively now solid state, you're gonna get more consistency, less driver variance, and better phase accuracy. 18 months later, and the first manufacturer has shown their hand, bringing this innovative technology to a very affordable price point. It's Singaporean-based creative technology with their Orvana Ace 2. And it's not just all about the MEMS tech. Everything about this release screams flagship. They boast a dual driver arrangement with the MEMS driver, bringing exceptional clarity to the highs and the mids, and a 10 mil dynamic driver dealing with those lower frequencies. They're using the latest Qualcomm chipset, so you've got an abundance of different codecs, including Aptex Lossless, Aptex Adaptive, and LC3. They're currently only available on the Creative site, and they're priced at $164.99. Not cheap by TWS standards, but a fraction of the cost of the other XMEM stuff that's out on the market right now. From a design perspective, Creative have gone for this golden stroke brown color scheme with a semi-transparent tint to it. It looks even better in real life than it does on the screen. And it's well built and robust too, with a friction hinge and a battery LED indicator on the bottom. Now due to its slim profile, the case is really pocket friendly, really portable. If you're looking to use these on the daily commute, for example, you can pop them in your jacket or your trouser pocket. It's not gonna give you too many problems. The case also has the benefit of Qi wireless charging, something we expect to see at Buds around this price. They have a stem-based design that really isn't anything out of the ordinary, although it does remind me of a TWS from yesteryear, the Tribute Flybuds. The design, as I said, is unremarkable and it's slightly longer than the majority of its competitors, although its curved neck makes it much more palatable than something like the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. Wearing more like the Soundpeats Air 4 Pro and the OnePlus Buds Pro series than the modular Realme Buds Air 5 Pro and Oppo Enco X2, which I find just don't have the stability. Despite the stem being slightly on the longer side, I still think that they wear really well. They aren't too bulky and they're easy enough to adjust without activating the touch controls. It is a very comfortable TWS, but I have to say, I really didn't get on with the stock tips. I've replaced them with these food grade latex tips, which I'll leave a link to in the description. They're the same tips which I used on the QCY HT05 to improve their fit as well. And if you look closely, you'll see that they have a very similarly designed nozzle. And perhaps this is the reason why this tip works so well. I've seen some reviews which have criticized the active noise cancellation performance. And I have to say using these tips improved ANC immeasurably. Even with the replacement tips, it is a little way short of some of those market leading ANC buds like the Technics AZ80, the Bose QC Ultra, the Apple AirPods, you know, that elite tier, but it's still very respectable and massively improved using those latex tips. I've included a couple of samples here so you can judge how effective they are at reducing a, a mixture of different frequency sounds and then compare them to, in my opinion, the leader at ANC in this price segment, the Edify Neobuds Pro 2. ANC. 
sound. cancellation. Ambient sound. So as you heard there, I don't think the active noise cancellation is half as bad as some of the reviews have made out. I don't feel it felt that far short of the Neobuds Pro 2 and the transparency mode in particular just like with their Zen Hybrid Pro headphones was very effective, very natural sounding it's more than capable of allowing you to have conversations close up and it doesn't present that white noise over the top of your voice that can be a little bit annoying with some lower budget and lower performance sets however whilst the strength is fine I do have some minor quibbles when you toggle through the various modes using the touch controls and you're tapping the left bud twice you have to go through each of the individual modes so it will go from ANC on to off and then to ambient you can't cut ANC off out like you can with the Neo Buds Pro 2 and many others you also don't have the ability to toggle into ambient mode during a call. You also don't have any ability to customize the strength level and there's no wind noise reduction mode. And it's wind noise really that is the Achilles heel because whilst it deals with most frequency sounds pretty well, it doesn't handle wind well at all. And this is a recurrent theme, you'll hear it again when we go through the call samples. The Ovana Ace 2 have six mics in total and just my voice technology that is designed to isolate your voice from your environmental sounds. This is how they sound in a very quiet room when you've been able to reduce all of the ambient sounds around you. Next, I'm gonna take you through a couple of different samples, one busy indoor and one busy outdoor, so you can see for yourselves and hear for yourselves how that just my voice technology fares. And this is how the sound when you're on an outdoor call. And it's a really windy day and you're walking through town centre, maybe you're on the daily commute, maybe you're heading to work, school, college, a train station, something like that. And you're heading through the traffic and there's loads of it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is how your voice call is going to sound in that kind of busy outdoor scene. And this time we tested the creative Orvana A2 in a busy indoor scene. I mean, the usual busy coffee shop here in the UK on the weekend. So you've got the sound of customers, a lot of innocent chatter going in the background. You've got music playing as well for the stereo system here. And this is how you can expect your Varna Ace Pro 2 to perform. So overall, I think they perform pretty well on calls. Whilst the gust of wind at the beginning of the outdoor sample sounded bad, that would have troubled every set of earbuds, even the Huawei Freebuds Pro 3, which are the leader when it comes to calls at any price point. If you like to use your buds in single mode, then do bear in mind it's only the left bud that allows you to use the mic. For whatever reason, if you try and use the right bud, your caller won't be able to hear you. But what about the audio, the sound signature and the sound quality? The question on all of your lips is gonna be, does it live up to the hype? I'm someone who's usually quite cynical on these new innovations and new technologies and whether they genuinely do improve the sound. But in the case of the Orvana Ace 2, I can definitely see and hear and even feel these improvements. But it wouldn't be a Reagan Cypher review if I didn't have something to complain about. And when it comes to the default tuning, I do feel that it's a little bit too hungry on the mid bass. When we look at the frequency response measurement, we see that they've loosely followed Harman, although there is just a little bit too much fat between 80 and 500 hertz. As a result, the amazing attack and decay that you've got on percussive elements isn't quite as replicated on your lower frequency instruments. The bass texture is just a little pillowy as well. I realize I'm a bit picky when it comes to bass on TWS, but this was just a little bit too much bloat for my liking and it had me reaching for the EQ immediately. But do not let that detract from the excellent mids and trebles. They're very clean sounding and detail retrieval is first class. If you're just used to using wireless headphones, then you'll start to hear instruments and sounds that you probably haven't heard since you listened to these tracks using wired headphones. 
the Orvana Ace 2 have a very natural tone and an organic timbre. In my experience of testing TWS for the last however many years it's been, when you've got a dual driver arrangement typically with a balanced armature and a dynamic driver, the BA will be slightly lesser quality than we come to expect on good IEMs for example, so that metallic tinge to the timbre is very evident. But of course on this set, because it's using the XMEMS driver as well as the DD, then that isn't present and the trebles and the mids definitely benefit as a result. The staging is quite wide as well. You can accurately get a sense of perspective, which you can't normally do with TWS. And the imaging as well for, for TWS, again, it punches above its weight. They do suffer from a pretty big EQ shift when you switch ANC off. So personal preference, I would keep it on. I'm not going to say that the sound tramples over all of its competition, but all of the things that MEMS sets out to do, such as improving that transient response, improving the clarity of the trebles, um, giving the sound a slightly different flavour, more dynamism through being more impactful rather than necessarily adding power, then I think it's definitely mission accomplished here from Creative. And as I mentioned previously, if that mid bass is a little bit too thick for you, you can always brave the EQ in the Creative app, provided you can get it to work. There's plenty of presets, although a fraction of the number that come with the Zen Hybrid Pro. You've also got the ability to customize the EQ and you can take an existing preset and customize that. The app gives you some other functionality as well, like toggling the different A and C modes and customizing your touch controls. Although you can't customize single tap, what you've got is double tap, triple tap and hold. That said, this didn't bother me too much. I could do everything that I wanted to do, controlling volume and cycling my tracks forwards and backwards and toggling the A and C modes. That's enough for me. My experience with the creative software though has been frustrating to say the least. Whilst I managed to get it working on iPhone, on Android, I still haven't managed to connect to the buds. That was the closest I got, but since upgrading the firmware, whilst I can now connect on Android, I can't see them in the app at all. And whilst I can select all of the codecs, including LC3, there were problems with that as well. The microphone volume, for whatever reason, is really low when you're using LC3. Aptex Adaptive has loads of problems as well. If you're using the buds for Duolingo, for example, every time there's a pause in using the microphone, it will reconnect. So you get that this is connected to Snapdragon sound message repeatedly popping up. I can't really connect to their BT L4 dongle either. It says in the Creative Windows app that I'm connected. But if you look back at the TWS, they remain in pairing mode constantly. And whilst Creative have brought out quite a few firmware releases and they have fixed some of the early problems, it's clear that these integration issues aren't going to go away quickly. And I've said previously, I don't think a lot of this is Creative's fault necessarily. I think there's problems with the Qualcomm chipset. The same issues are manifesting with different sets of earbuds. To be honest, Qualcomm have made a real pig's ear of Snapdragon sound. Nobody really understands the benefits of it. It hasn't really effectively rolled out to all the different devices. And the TWS manufacturers haven't worked out a way of being able to easily select through different codecs in their own app. That said, Creative will fix these problems eventually. And once they do, you're left with a really capable set of earbuds with real innovative driver technology that has a lot of other positive facets as well. They're IPX5 sweat and moisture resistant and they're really stable in the ear. So they're equally fine for wearing at the gym as they are on the daily commute where you might get caught in a downpour. Multipoint connectivity works well and I got only just short of the six hours advertised battery life. There's always gonna be some people that need more than that, but when you compare it to their competitors, it's around about the same as what they're delivering. What you can't get from those competitors is that technical performance and the competitive advantage that that XMEMS technology brings. Creative will be hoping that they can fix these problems that they've got with connectivity and integration sooner rather than later. Hats off to the team at Creative though for continuing to push the boundaries and try and bring more innovation into the market. If you enjoyed the review, please do give it a like and put your comments in the comment section below. If you own the Orvana Ace 2 or if you're interested in getting it, I'd love to hear from you and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. For now, it's Reagan Cypher signing off.